Hello, everybody. Um, happy Sunday. I'm drinking coffee at 3 p.m. It's one of those days. Um, okay, I see Rebecca. I am so excited to chat with Rebecca, um, author of One Italian Summer and truly one of my favorite books of all time. I am so excited. Um, and I hope everyone can hear me and see me because sometimes... Did I'm... it work? Hi! <laughs> Yay, we did it! Can you hear and see me okay? I can hear you perfectly. Can you hear and see me okay? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, good, 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 good. <laughs> So if there's a problem, just signal and I will walk out of this room and we will just improvise. We're good. We're good. Hi. Hi. I um I feel like I know you. I've heard so much about you from um our mutual friend Karina. Yes. And, um, I just getting to know you even through your books has just been such a treat and such a delight. I'm just so excited and so honored for you to be here today and have a discussion and um I'm so happy and excited. Thank you, back at you. Thank you also for just all of your love and support of One Time Summer and also in five years. You're the best. And I, I mean, I appreciate you and I know the whole book community appreciates you and what you do. So thank you. Well, thank you. I mean, it's like, I, I'm just so excited to be able to support an author and books that, uh, and reading in general. And um, your books in particular are just like, I was trying to just like, describe it in my head and for me what comes to mind is just comfort like it's like comfort food um I discovered um in five years during the pandemic and we were on this big road trip and I listened to it on on I say on tape but on audible yeah <laughs> it, it totally dates me but um and it was like I was so it was so comforting and um, and that's what your stories and your storytelling is like. And one Italian summer is no different. It is, you know, shit. Um, it's so comforting and like comfort food. And it's like that great t-shirt, that great movie you want to watch over and over and over again, even though you know exactly what's going to happen. You just can't wait to turn the page. It's, I, I canceled so many plans reading your book. Cause I was like, no, I'm busy tonight. And I would curl <laughs> and read. It was just such a delight and such a treat. Um, I would love to know a bit about your journey. Um, I've read a little bit about what inspired you, but I would love for you to tell everyone and just, um, you know, speak what, what, how did this start and what, what, tell us a little bit about One Italian Summer. Yes. Okay. So One Italian Summer, and thank you so much again for all your super kind words. It's so, it's so nice to hear. The last few weeks have been so special because, you know, as you said, In Five Years came out in the middle of, uh, not in the middle, at, at really like the jump of COVID. It came out March 10th of 2020. So I didn't get to tour for that or we didn't really have this virtual thing. It wasn't set up in the same way. So getting to really be like out in communities over the last few weeks and get to chat to people has been so heartwarming and really, really lovely and special for me. So thank you. Um, One Italian Summer is a story of Katie Silver. She is a young woman who has just lost her mother and her mother was her best friend and first phone call and you know, all those things that moms can be. And Carol, her mother had always talked about this magical trip that she spent in Positano right before she met uh, Katie's father and became a wife and a mom and her whole life kind of changed. So the two of them had this like mother daughter trip of a lifetime plan to go back to Italy together. Carol unfortunately passes before they can go and Katie decides to embark on this adventure alone. And then in a magical twist ends up meeting her mother when her mother is 30 and they spend the summer together as two young women. Um, so I, in the summer of 2019, went back to Rome and then Positano with my mom. And my mom had to always talked about, always like since I was a kid, since as long as I can remember, talked about this magical summer she spent in Positano when she was 20. And she fell in love with this man named Ramo and went with her best friend, Meryl. And they just had this like wonderful three months. And we ended up finding Meryl through his sister on Facebook. And they met at the Trevi Fountain, which is the place that they had met 50 years beforehand. And he brought, it was crazy. And he brought her this little charm that said love on it that she had given him that summer, like 50 years ago. And it was so special, you know, and it really just got me thinking about all of the women that our mothers are before we get to know them and what it might be like if you got to really genuinely spend time with that person. Because I felt like I just, I got to spend an afternoon with her in seeing her with this old love of hers. Oh my God, that is, that's such a special and intimate relationship to have with your mom and have that 
to, to have her bring you along through her lens of what it must have been like to be 30 years old or however old she was. Yes. Know, that must have been so special and so amazing. And it really, I don't know. I mean, obviously it was inspired by that, but it really, that, um, that relationship, that intimacy really seeps through your books and your storytelling. Um, you know, five years, there's that relationship with two best friends and in mm -hmm. um, between a mother and a daughter. Um, you know, with One Italian Summer, it was inspired by this trip, but how, what is that like writing about these relationships? Because that must be, I mean, it's so intimate and so warming and um, I, it's so personal that I, I feel like it really reminded me how human my mom is and it made me yeah. think my mom and I, I'm wondering what that process is like for you to be able to write that and put that on the page. Yeah, it's really, it's interesting because I feel like we, you know, I think for better or worse, we sort of make our parents into gods and either they're wonderful and they have all the answers, which is how Katie hears about Carol in a lot of ways, how I felt about my mother or, you know, or it's the opposite and they're these sort of like all knowing, but they have so much power in our lives. And I think the process of growing up is you realize how little you know, right? Like how little we, any of us really know what it is we're doing. And we realize that they're just human beings after all. And and I feel like I, you know, I tend to write about very intimate female relationships. There are stories that I don't often see reflected. And, you know, I, the female relationships in my life have just been foundational. They've been so important to my life. You know, I've been single for a very long time. I haven't started my own family. And so my friends in a lot of ways are like, they are those ties for me. And so in five years, was really a tribute to that. And it's interesting. Also, I will sometimes have people say to me, oh, don't you think Danny and Bella's relationship is sort of codependent? And I will say, maybe, but also I just think we are so unfamiliar with, with hearing and seeing and reading and recognizing intimate female relationships and all of the complexity that they can bring to our own lives. And so, you know, One Italian Summer is in a way a continuation of that. It's just, it's a mother and a daughter this time instead of two best friends. But those are the relationships that are, are, have been so important in my life. And so they're the ones that I'm in dialogue with and wrestling with and wanting to reflect. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that. And I, I, it's so crazy that they are, people would say that it is codependent. I feel like it is such a complicated, unnecessarily complicated um, relationship in a way. And I feel like it's not explored enough where, you know, the ups and the downs and the highs and lows, because that really is, you know, the relationships that we have with our mothers and our friends and mm -hmm. the grieving of a friendship or the grieving of, um, you know, a, a loss of a friend or a mother or a loved one and stuff. So I, um, I don't know, I, I love how you write them. And I think they're so special and so wonderful. And, um, you know, I think that's why they're such great st digestible stories. Um, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, so now that your book has been out for a month, um, what have you been hearing? I mean, I could rave all day long, but ha ha what have you been hearing about it? And has it been exciting? And Yeah. Well, okay, so a few things. So I got to be on the road for about two and a half weeks. And so many mothers and daughters came out so many like adult mothers and daughters it was it like really honestly so special to see these like really sweet date nights between mothers and daughters and so many people have been reported that they're reading it with their moms or you know they're reading it with their daughters with their with their adult daughters and so that's been really special um i know a lot of uh, folks are reading it for their book club and i always love that like that's a really fun thing and Hopefully I will, I will start to drop in on book clubs as the, as the months go on and get to say hi to those people. Um, and then last week, I had my last book tour stop in, uh, at Warwick's in San Diego. It was a library fundraiser. And my mom came and surprised me, my own mother. So she like sort of just showed up there and that was a really fun event and became like a very mother-daughter chatty event. And that was very sweet. Um, the other thing I will say is that I wrote this book right after In Five Years came out. So I wrote this book from Mar uh, April to June of 2020, um, you know, in that very sort of like tenuous time where we really could not leave our houses at all. And I so wanted to be anywhere that wasn't my home. And I really wanted to be in Italy. And so I, it really, to me, this book was a vacation to write. It was my daily vacation and my daily meditative practice during that 
time. And I really love that people have said that it feels like a vacation to read. Like it feels like they are in Italy reading it because that was my hope. And so I really, I love that, that that's getting across. Um, I was so impressed. I, I read somewhere that you were, and you obviously just confirmed it, that you weren't obviously in Italy when you wrote it, um, because I definitely felt like I was there. I could smell it. I could hear the sounds. I was in the Amalfi Coast, which is like a favorite spot um, of my husband and I are yeah. one of our favorite spots. And we always talk about how we wish um, we could bring that feeling back here all the time. And I feel like you accomplished that so well. And I don't know how you did it when you weren't even there. That's such an amazing um, skill set. Uh, was that like, did you find like it was super fun to be able to tra be transported? Was it challenging? Because I feel like I would be struggling. Like, what was that like? What did that look like? Like, how did you so, do it? I will tell you that I didn't really, I mean, listen, this thing happened with my mom and I felt like, okay, like that probably is a story that eventually is going to want to be told. But I had no intention of setting a book in Italy or, or even writing another novel at the time. I, I just wasn't sure. And so, but I always know my last day in Positano, um, I walked around the whole town and I just took videos of, of streets and the way they sort of run into each other and street signs. And I always know that um, if I do that, it's my brain's way of saying like, hey, you're going to want to return to this. You're going to want to see the way this town moves geographically speaking in order to important yeah. to my books. You know, New York was so important to the dinner list in five years. And, and obviously one time summer is really just about Positano. And so it was really helpful to me then in April of 2020 to come back to my notes and to, to look at all these videos about just the way the town unfolds. So I, I really, I had so much fun calling up my memories of my week there and, and you know, just remembering all the different uh, like meals that different restaurants serve. And, you know, there's like every morning she does the Path of the Gods, which is this like beautiful stairwell walk. Um, and just really, you know, this book is about coming back to life. Like, this is a book about a woman who starts off in a place of really deep grief. And we really, like, we bring her back to life. And I feel like Italy is such a great place to do that. And food is such an important part of that. Um, so it was, it was so joyful for me to just, like, feed her spiritually and physically in that way, in that place. Oh, that's so great. It's so funny. I, one of my questions was your descriptions of food are just, they're so mouthwatering. Um, and why is Katie's pure, simple enjoyment of food in Posit Positano so favorite? And do you have a favorite food moment from the book? Okay, so um, there's this restaurant that's in the book called La Tagliata. It's this place in the hills. Did you guys go there when you were there? We did, but do they teach you how to cook as well? I feel like my sister-in-law told me about this restaurant because it stuck out in my brain. And I was like, I know I've heard of this place. I think that they do. I th I honestly think, so they have this working farm. It's this place that's like 20 yeah. minutes up in the hills by, by car in Positano. They have this working farm. And so I believe that they do have cooking classes there, but they have two dining, like two dining times a night. I think one's at like five and one's at eight. And there's no menu. They just like plunk down a bottle of red wine and a bottle of white wine and they just bring you all the food. I mean, every kind of pasta and seafood and vegetable, like, and it's all fresh and locally grown. And you leave feeling like you're really gonna die because it's just, it's crazy. It's more food than anyone could possibly eat. But it's, 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 I mean, it's so delicious and so good. And also the whole restaurant is just like set in this open, you're like basically in a tree house hanging over the sea. So it, that was very, very, very special. But the food there, you know, the thing about Italy is it's all about just fresh ingredients. Everything is so simple and so simply prepared, but it's all just delicious because everything is grown so beautifully and locally. It's amazing. I mean, I, I love, I just love the relationship with food. I feel like we eat so much there, but we always leave like the same weight, which is always like yes. a little alarming. Um, but I think it's their relationship to the food, like all of the cliffs and all, you know, I just remember grabbing fruit trees very illegally, like grabbing people's lemons, <laughs> lemon groves and stuff in the orchards. And like, you know, Jared and I were like smelling these lemons because everything is so fresh and fragrant and um, yeah. growing. And it's, it's so much about pleasure there. And I think that we, like, I always feel that when I'm, when I'm particularly in Italy, but also a lot of different cultures, like it's really about pleasure. And I think pleasure and consumption are very different things to them. Like, I think we are familiar 
like a lot of times with the idea of consumption and pleasure being the same and pleasure is very just slow and lingering and it doesn't mean that more is necessarily better and I find that idea to be so peaceful in Italy yeah yeah I think that's a great description and okay you're back can you hear me yeah I can hear you you're totally back okay <laughs> but we all Jared and my husband and I always talk about that it's it's literally our favorite spot because I feel like um there's a sense of improvisation that is acceptable there and it also relates in your book with like should we do this should we do that we're trying that all these things that are kind of like all their natural things but I feel like we deprive ourselves so much in our day to day, I don't know if it's an American thing or something where we have to stick by the schedule and, and mm -hmm. on the rat race. And when you're there, it's just you live your life and yeah. your kids are part of that life. Like you'll see children at 10 o'clock at night eating dinner and there's, you know, a whole, you know, feast, but it's all local and it's all in season and it all kind of relates to every, I, I don't know. Yes. Yeah, I love what you're saying. Um, and I, I, well, we, and we just, I want to figure out how to bring that back. That's my, yeah. that's my goal in life is to figure out how to bring that feeling back. Um, and I, anyways, I just, um, I really love how you incorporate all of that. And I think food is so much a part of that. And the, mm -hmm. the, 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 um, you use such a great metaphor, you know, just like, um, feed, like nurturing your mother and nurturing that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, um, you said that your mom is your first phone call. Um, has your relationship changed with your, um, mom after writing this book? That's such a great question. I feel like, okay, so my mom was the first one to read this book. Normally it's, um, a very dear friend of mine and then my agent, but I sent her just the very, very, very first draft. I wanted her to be the first one to read it and also to say, to see like if there was anything that she felt. And not that I would, not that I would necessarily take anything out, but I don't know. I had never done that before. And I did on this one. I think it's made me, I think that she in reading, I mean, my books are first person. They're very personal stories. No, I have not been through exactly the circumstances, thankfully, that my characters have been through, but I'm always writing books to figure out something about how I feel about my own life. They're just, they're emotionally very close to the experience of my own life. And so I think my mom tends to see herself in a lot of my books. Obviously, this is an extreme example. And so I think that it really, it really hit her, this idea, um, I won't spoil anything, but there is a section where Katie is sort of saying like thinking to herself about her mother like why did you not prepare me for this like why did you not prepare me for the reality that i was eventually going to have to live in this world without you because if we are lucky which i hope we you know i hope we are i would never wish the alternative on on my mom we all become motherless daughters at some point and so i think that 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 reality sort of um hit her and hit our relationship in a way that um has been like sort of bittersweet, but also very tender to talk about because it's not something that I think you always discuss with family while they're here. Yeah, I feel like that whole um, preparation for like that next phase doesn't happen. And I feel like the mystery, you know, behind the curtain is never fully discussed either. Like, you'll, I, I feel like we get snippets of things, but it's not the whole spectrum and it's still through memory, which is very faulty. So it's, yeah. you know, um, it's not the full perspective. So it's that's um, both perspectives, you know, just that that moving on in life and that preparation that that must be um, bittersweet to be able to talk about. Um, I wish that I hope everyone gets to be able to have those conversations. But um, what a great way to open the door for that, I suppose. Yeah. And I also think, you know, I think the other thing um is like is this idea that and i think this is really the message of of one a time summer that no one knows the blueprint for our lives better than we do like not even our own moms and so i think that 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 has also come up for us and that you know i think our moms want us to behave the way they have and have lives that are similar to theirs because they want us to be happy and that's that's you know if they led happy lives that's how they identify happiness and so i think there's a lot of i think part of growing up is 
letting go of who you think and who your parents were. But I also think that your, your parents, specifically your mother, has to let go of who they thought you would be also. They're right. Like both parties have to do that work. Yeah, absolutely. It's something that um, I have to, we've been sort of talking about that, about with our kids and what sports they're going into, what their, mm -hmm. you know, propensity is for, you know, whatever in school, subject in school or friends. And it's really challenging knowing when to step in and letting expectations go um, so that they can lead and live their own lives. It's yes. Fun. Yeah. And begin to trust that internal compass that we all have, you know, not have someone come in and, and like, be like, no, 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 it's this, but say like, okay, oh, wait, yes, it is that. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of expectations that it's like, go, let it go, it's so tough. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was your, who was your favorite character to write? I think young Carol was my favorite character to write. You know, Katie is our protagonist. We're in first person, we're with her. But she's a character who, when we meet her, really doesn't have a very clear, defined sense of self. She believes that her life is a product of the choices that other people have made for her, specifically her mother. So she really, like, this book is really her finding her own autonomy. Um, compared to my last novel in five years that opens with just like eight, like a giant bang of a woman who's like, this is exactly what my life is like, this is how life works, and I know exactly what it is. Katie is very lost when we meet her. And so she was, she was like, I enjoyed writing her more as the book went on, but she was a challenging character in the beginning because she is, she, she just doesn't really exactly know who she is. And it takes a while for her to come to that. And so young Carol was really just fun because she's so vibrant. She's so, they are both searching for answers that they don't have. Both young Katie, both young Carol, excuse me, and Katie are searching for answers that they don't have yet. But um, young Carol was really fun to write, especially because you get to see it in a little, like little tidbits about how and why she became the woman that she ended up becoming. Um, but she's also very, very different when we meet her when she's young than, than you know, than the mother that we like, that we see in, in flashback a bit that was Katie's mom. So I had a lot of fun with young Carol. Is awesome. Well, and not to, I won't spoil anything, but that to then it, when you get to the end and then you look back and you go, oh, okay, I see what she was going through because both of them are going through really big life changing moments in their lives. So to yeah. get there and have to explore that, you know, in themselves and find themselves right there is pretty fantastic. Yeah. Um, it's very magical, which brings me back to, um, I think I read somewhere about magical realism and that is something that you do so well because as a reader you know obviously it's impossible to go back and meet your 30 year old mom like it just can't happen but you can move past it as a reader and it's never something you even think twice about because you so badly want to be there and in that moment um tell us a, a little bit about that and being a bit magical within your books i really I really, so it's, it began with a dinner list and then, you know, obviously in five years has magic to it and, and, and one time summer like we're discussing. I think for me, well, there's an element of wish fulfillment to my books that I, I really enjoy like swimming in, you know, I, like I would love to be able to spend a summer with, you know, the 30 year old version of my mom, like that would be really fun. So th that's a part of it. But also I think magical realism allows us to just like open the door much wider than we would have normally, you could write a book about a mother who is, I mean, excuse me, you could write a book about a daughter who's grieving her mother, and you could write a book about her sort of discovering things about her mom's past and piecing them together, and that would be beautiful. But you get to cut to the quick faster when you can allow a little bit of magic to come in. It's like we're not seeing her mother through letters, we're just, we're seeing her. So it's, it's, um, I guess it's a little bit of a cheat, but it allows you to just get to the heart in a very different way that you can't always without magic. And so I love, I love employing magic because I think it lets me tell just a deeper, truer, more close to the core version of the story that I'm trying to tell. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's so, it's so beautiful. It's so perfectly done. And, um, I think we all want a little bit of magic, right? So yeah. it's, it, it's just really, it's very beautiful and sweet. Um, uh, um, sorry, I'm looking at my notes. I can't, I'm getting so old, you guys, that I can't. Can I just say that I'm obsessed with your glasses? They are so fantastic. Thanks. They're um, Katie's or Caddy's. Have you heard of them? 
No, but I love them. God, like someone turned me on to them. They're like, you should try getting a pair of readers. And I was like, oh God. And then they had all these cute ones. <laughs> so they're so cute. They're they so cute. <laughs> But I swear to God, like, I didn't even think I needed them. And then suddenly I put them on and I was like, oh my gosh, I can see. Um, so I apologize. But um, after, um, you know, in five years with such a big success, um, and it seemed like, like right off the bat, um, do you, did you feel like more pressure afterwards? Like, did you feel like I have to follow it up? Or was it like, what was that feeling like for you? What was that process like? Um, in the writing process, no. So I just write, I, you know, my books tend to, I'll have like the seed of an idea and I'll turn on it for about eight to 10 months. And then I'll just sort of fall into a hole and write for three months and write it. I like to stay very in step with my books. So I write books pretty quickly. And the writing process is always just what the writing process is. So writing one at a time summer was honestly, truly delightful. And I never thought about it. I thought about it right before the book came out because I felt, um, I felt like I, I'm, I felt a sense of responsibility, not just to, not just to like all of the readers and all of the people who loved in five years, I wanted to give them another story they would love. That's part of it. But also all of the people that, um, that work with me to me, to bring these books, you know, to put these books out into the world. I want everything that we do to be a success and I want it to keep, you know, topping itself. And so I felt, I felt just, yeah, like a sense of responsibility to them, to everyone surrounding me. I don't know exactly if I would, I would call it pressure, but more, I just, I wanted, I really wanted to deliver for everyone else. And so I, it makes me very, very happy that people are loving this book and people are responding to it in ways that are both similar and different than in five years. And the other thing I will say is I, you know, I am, I am going to keep exploring like I, I you know I started off in young adult because I sold my first book when I was 24 and I was really close to the teen experience and then when I entered my 30s I wanted to talk about love and relationships and I wanted to talk about very different things and so my expectation is that my books will continue to evolve as I do and I hope that readers will keep meeting me um where I am I will I, like I don't know if I will always deliver a book that everyone will love not that everyone loves this but I feel like they'll be you know they'll they'll resonate to varying degrees, but I always want to approach books telling the truth of, of life as I see it, telling the truth of my own life. So, um, so I feel like if I keep doing that, I'll, I'll be okay. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Well, and it's amazing. You're saying that you write in three months or like half, that's a, it seems like a very quick and fast process. Um, do you, do you have an idea or is it just like, you know, I having just, a cathartic experience is there something that you know fuels you to write something or a story idea or do you just kind of throw stuff against the wall I think that I really believe did you ever read Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic it's her book about writing and about the process of writing it's really beautiful but anyway she talks about the fact that ideas are just in the atmosphere and they will try to find like homes in various and if you and if you, um, if you sit down and capture that idea, then that idea belongs to you. But if you don't, then it doesn't and it will move on to somebody else. I really do believe that. And so when an idea comes to me, I try, I try to make my life, um, I try to, I try to make my life in a way that I, I can just sort of drop in and tell that story that really wants to be told. Um, and I really, like for me, my process is that I like to stay in step with it. I write 2000 words a day until the book is finished. Uh, coming in and out of a book is harder for me. I know a lot of people, you know, like to sort of turn on something for a few years and really get to see it. I, maybe I'm just like a very impatient writer. I don't know. I don't feel like I have that, that level of disposable patience at my fingertips. But I really, I find that staying in step with the work really helps me emotionally, helps the trajectory feel uh, very clean and unified because I'm just, I'm like in her perspective and I never get too far out of it. So writing quickly is, it helps me right now. Writing processes change as, you know, as we grow, but right, right now that is how I feel works best for me. All right, that totally makes sense. I'll have to go and grab that book. It sounds fantastic. It's um, really good. <laughs> speaking of which, what are you reading right now? Is there anything? Um... Yes. I am reading my, my dear friend, Jen Smith, uh, had a book come out the same day as one of time summer called, uh, the unsinkable Greta James, which I, I love. And I actually just finished, um, Carter Bay's new book. Um, I mean, I, I believe it's actually his debut novel. He's the creator of, of How I Met Your Mother. 
uh, the mutual friend. And I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know exactly when it comes out. I think maybe next month. It's excellent, 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 excellent. So that, that's been what's been on my bookshelf. It's, yeah, really fantastic. Awesome. Um, well, I will have to pick those up. I, um, I always love good reads and good recommendations yeah. um, from people. I owe Karina a list too, so I'll put that on the list for her too. Um, but, uh, and then what else, like, I, I know that you also have written scripts and you're a producer. Um, what, what else is next for you? Are you taking a minute? Are you going to write a new novel? Like, do you have like a specific, you know, um, I guess genre that you work on at a time or how does, what can we expect? Yes. Um, yes. In short, yes, I'm a, I'm, I'm a very, very bad multitasker. I wish I was better at it. So yes, my brain tends to like focus on one thing at a time. I, um, I'm going to turn my attention shortly to editing actually a new book that I wrote last year. So that's really exciting. And then, um, there are, I'll have like more to say about, um, various adaptations of these novels soon and, and what my role will be in them. Um, I, I, I'm going to write one myself. So that'll also, I feel like be a next project for me. Well, that's awesome. I really hope that we can see this on the big screen. Cause me too. Me too. I would love that. <laughs> um, I just I love chatting with you. I love your books. I'm really excited for next year um, for your new book. <laughs> I will be first at the bookstore. Um, and I'm so grateful to have this conversation. And um, I just, I really, you're just such a, your books are such a delight. And um, I cannot wait to reread One Italian Summer. So I'm going to go and do that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. You are an absolute light and delight. And thank you so much for all of your support and everything you do, really. No, oh, you're amazing. <laughs> thank you so much. And keep it up. I'm really excited. I can't wait. You got it. We'll <laughs> chat soon. Bye, right, you so guys. Bye. Thank you.